So the question is, should you upgrade to NVIDIA Ampere? Before I answer that, let's quickly have a look at the facts first. So the end of 2020 will undoubtedly bring a huge amount of exciting new tech from a wide range of companies. First up, we got Microsoft and Sony who are launching new gaming consoles, which makes use of AMD's brand new RDNA 2 architecture, which AMD also plans on having ready for the PC gaming space with big Navi at the forefront. And now we also got got NVIDIA Ampere. Now while Big Navi is a few months away, Ampere is launching pretty soon actually. And if you're thinking about building a new gaming PC or upgrading your existing one, now is the perfect time. But is it worth it? Let's take a look at the GeForce RTX 3000 series with the Ampere architecture under the hood and see if the hype is justified. So during the NVIDIA GeForce event, Jensen, head of NVIDIA, introduced three new graphics cards in the next-gen GPU lineup, the GeForce RTX 3090, the 3080 and the 3070 and to everyone's surprise, Nvidia <laughs> literally fooled us all by doubling the number of CUDA cores on all the graphics cards where rumors been pointing to 5248 CUDA cores for the 3090, while well, it turns out this card is getting double that amount, we're talking 10,494 cores and I think most of us were we're pretty shocked seeing these figures, even our beloved Copite 7 Kimi. Anyway, it should be said, this guy has done an amazing job pretty much nailing every single Nvidia Ampere prediction, so congrats man, very well done. Seeing 10,000 CUDA cores begs the question obviously, should AMD be worried now? Well, it doesn't seem like Scott Herkelman, GM at Radeon, is that scared actually. But maybe he knows something about Pig Navi, we don't. Anyway, let's have a look at the official Ampere specs. First up, we got the 3090. This is pretty much Ampere on steroids. So if you're one of those that have been dreaming of gaming in 8K at 60fps, I'm happy to say that there is finally a graphics card that can do that now. And as early reports indicated, the RTX 3090 is a real monster with 24GB of G6X, which according to Nvidia makes it possible to game at 60fps in 8K resolution which hasn't been possible on any GPU ever before and this card will be relatively expensive with a price tag of around 1500 US dollars so this card is definitely not for the mainstream gamer it is simply put the most powerful single GPU for gaming ever created if you're not interested in paying 1500 dollars for a graphics card Nvidia's upcoming RTX 3080 at 700 dollars might be your cup of tea instead Instead, RTX 3080 is according to Nvidia twice as powerful as the RTX 2080 and it's actually three times as powerful as the upcoming PlayStation 5. And again, this is a $700 graphics card. The only problem I see with the 3080 is the fact that it only has 10 gigs worth of VRAM which obviously can make it a problem gaming in 4K with everything being maxed out as we have seen games using more than 12 gigs worth of VRAM. Anyway, let's jump over to the last card presented guys this is the geforce rtx 3070 and this card to me seems like the best price and performance card of them all there's no question about this here comes the interesting part guys in terms of performance nvidia claims that the upcoming 3070 is faster than the previous generation top card the rtx 2080 ti and in terms of relative performance the 3070 has 20 teraflops of shader performance and stand against the 2080 ti this card has only 14 so there is a huge gap between these two but to be fair the 2080 ti has more bandwidth and more vram anyway the 3070 is exactly twice as powerful as the upcoming ps5 and over half the cost of a rtx 2080 ti which makes it a very very interesting graphics card and to keep all cards cool and quiet nvidia applies a new cooling solution this time around it's a very interesting design and it's gonna be interesting to see how well this works in, in reality. Now the question still remains, should you upgrade to Nvidia Ampere and will it be worth it? 
Now, while it's still a bit too early to know how exactly each card will perform in a traditional gaming performance FPS comparison fashion way, Ampere is way more efficient than previous generation, where TP Top 2080 Ti was struggling to hit 60 FPS in 4K. Upcoming RTX 3070 should make that a reality. Now, the question is, how is that possible? Well, it's pretty simple actually. Nvidia solves this by adding a bunch of CUDA, Tensor, and Ray tracing cores to Ampere, which together with a more efficient architecture, results in doubled RTX performance compared to previous generation cards. We see an 2.7 times higher a shaded performance compared to Turing, and in terms of ray tracing performance, we see an 1.7 times better performance than against Turing, and up to 2.7 times better tensor performance. And this should have a huge impact on the FPS count. One of the most important aspects here is pricing of course and the thing is Ampere won't be terrible expensive either. The price for the RTX 3070 lands at 499 with the 3080 getting a price tag of 699 Finally the 3090 starts at 1499 The 3080 releases first on September 17th followed up by the 3090 releasing on September 24th where the 3070 drops in October. With that all being said, to answer the question whether you should upgrade to Ampere or not, I think it's safe to say that Ampere will bring a huge uplift in price and performance, and if you're struggling to hit a satisfying FPS in 1080 or 1440p or even 4K, yeah, I definitely think Ampere is your answer. With that said, which card has the best price and performance value then? While I do think it's a bit too early to answer that, based on the fact that we haven't seen any actual gaming benchmarks yet, but just based on Nvidia's numbers at face value, the RTX 3070 definitely looks like it can be a fantastic card in any budget gaming PC build. Obviously guys, I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. Which card are you looking forward to the most? Let me know, drop it in the comments down below.